and today I'm going to be talking about a topic that a lot of dancers aren't really that comfortable talking about because it's not something that's very positive and not something that really anyone wants to have to deal with and that topic is dance injuries and obviously they happen all the time many many dancers get injured dance is just like any other athletic activity or sport you get injured so today i'm going to be talking with you guys about injuries that i've had how to deal with injuries how to keep your fitness level up if you're injured and you're planning on going back to dance and also how to help avoid injuries i really hope this video helps you guys out and feel free to leave any of your questions in the comments below and also i'm really sorry that i haven't made a video on this channel in a while it's not because i've forgotten about you guys it's because i myself have been injured and so I haven't been able to dance and that's been really hard so I've just been making videos on my main channel which is Clarissa May and if you haven't checked that channel out you should definitely go do that because that's the channel that I'm posting at least once every week on right now now coming back to the injury that I have right now I have stress fractures in my metatarsals on both feet and we're not exactly sure what's going on with that right now because it seems like they should be healed but at the same time I'm still having pain in my feet and I'm also having pain in my knees and also in my hips. So I'm just having a lot of issues with my body right now, which means that I can't really dance right now and so I can't show you guys exercises and stretches to do because my feet and my knees and everything aren't really in shape right now. So getting back to the point of this video, I'm first gonna be talking about how to avoid injuries. And the number one thing that I've learned over my years in dance is that you have to learn where your limits are because on the one hand, you have to push yourself as hard as you possibly can in order to improve, but then on the other hand, Hand, you have to learn where your limits are so that you don't injure yourself and my problem has been that I push myself way 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 too hard which is how I've improved so fast but then that's also how I got injured so it's a double-edged sword for sure so if you're in class and you ever feel any kind of pain or any weird tingling sensation any sort of weird unusual feeling in any part of your body please tell your teachers as soon as you possibly can because the thing is that your teachers know you best and so they'll be able to tell you what might be going on. They have probably danced for many, many years and probably experienced many injuries of their own and seen their friends be injured as well so they have a lot of knowledge about what certain injuries look like, how to treat them and that kind of thing. I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that I'm a doctor in any way, shape or form. So definitely if you are feeling any pain, talk to your teachers and talk to your doctors before you do anything and before you continue doing class. I've seen a lot of people get pain halfway through class and then if they keep going through center, then by the end of class that pain might have turned into an injury and they might not be able to do class the next day or for a week or for several weeks and the thing is that it's much better to just take a break when you first feel any signs of pain rather than keep going through the pain and then have to take more time off later on. Also, when you're stretching, make sure that you stretch all parts of your body equally. I know that a lot of competitive dancers sometimes just stretch one side of their body and then kind of ignore the other side of their body, but the problem with that is that although you might be really flexible on one side of your body, on the other side of your body, you're gonna be really lopsided. So that leads to a bunch of issues with your spine, with the alignment of your body, and then also with your technique in the long run, which can lead to injuries. If you know that you are injured, it's really important to talk to the correct kind of doctor maybe you need to see a specialist just talk to your teacher because they will know what is best for you if you have a dance injury they might be able to suggest a doctor that specializes in your kind of injury and they'll definitely be able to help you out so please talk to your teachers and talk to your doctors and just keep that line of communication open even if you have scary Russian teachers and you feel like they're just gonna eat you up if you tell them that you're feeling any kind of pain and they're just gonna tell you to suck it up it's important that you know that you tried to keep that line of communication open and if you don't feel like you're confident enough to talk to your teacher, please go talk to a doctor or your parents instead. The injuries that I've experienced in the past are a strained and torn ligament that connects my hamstring to the bone, which was so excruciatingly painful. I couldn't lift my leg above like 20 degrees off the ground. It was not a fun time. And the problem was that that was just a few weeks before YGP. So I had to just keep going. And so that made it worse. And then in the long run, I had to just take a little break, go see an acupuncturist which I definitely suggest for certain kinds of injuries acupuncture can really really help and I've also experienced many sprained ankles and sprained ankles are not fun and I've had some friends who have sprained their ankles so badly that they're never able to dance the same afterwards and the problem is that sometimes your point shoes can fit you very poorly which can lead to weakness in your ankles so make sure that whenever you go to get your point shoes fitted that you're getting them fitted by a 
professional and also that if you feel like the professional isn't knowledgeable enough that you bring your teacher along so that they're able to help you out in choosing the right kind of shoe and make sure that you don't become unnecessarily injured. So the injuries that I'm dealing with right now are stress fractures in both my feet, pain in my knees, pain in my hips and also pain in my lower back. So I just pretty much have pain all over right now. It's not good, obviously, so I'm not dancing right now because dancing would only be making my problems worse. I'm gonna be seeing a specialist to figure out exactly what's going on, but that explains why I haven't been able to post on this channel and why I've been mainly posting on my other channel, my personal channel, of course, May, and my vlog channel, and also why I haven't been posting that many dance pictures on Instagram. Right now, I'm really just hoping that eventually my feet and my knees and everything will heal well enough that I'm able to actually go back and dance on point as much as I want to because at this point in time dancing on point would be very very painful and it might cause me to have pain when I'm even just walking later in life so I kind of have to choose between walking and dancing and walking is kind of important so if dancing now means that I won't be able to walk later in life I'm not really sure that that's a good trade-off <laughs> sometimes soreness can be interpreted as injuries and I've had friends who who have interpreted their extreme soreness from taking some really hard classes as an injury. And that happens sometimes. The only way to tell if you're injured or if you're not is to go to a doctor, talk to your teachers, and make sure that nothing more than just muscle soreness is going on. And if it is muscle soreness, you may just need to take a few days off, use some Tiger Balm, which is amazing, and maybe ice your muscles, maybe apply some heat to your muscles, and just keep stretching. And that brings me to another point, which is how to stay in shape and stay flexible while you're injured. There are many, many different kinds of dance injuries. Sometimes you're not allowed to stretch when you have a certain kind of injury. If that's the case, then you just have to listen to your doctors and your teachers because they know best. But if you are allowed to stretch, then try your hardest to keep your flexibility level up while you're taking a break from dance. And also you can try out maybe doing some floor bar if your doctor permits it. I definitely recommend the New York City Ballet workout routine and I believe they also have some floor bar exercises as well. And I know that Katherine Morgan has some good bar exercises. And yoga is also an amazing way to keep your body in shape and flexible. I definitely recommend it and it also just helps balance your mind and take your mind away from the worry of being injured. Because believe me, I know how hard it is to be injured. It's it's really stressful to have to be away from dance and sometimes you don't know when you're going to be able to go back. In the end, being injured isn't necessarily the end of the world. Some people have different paths that may take them away from dance eventually. And if it looks like your injuries are going to be taking you away from dance for a week, a month, or several years, then what I would suggest is finding another creative artistic outlet so that you don't just go completely mentally insane because I understand that feeling. I'm a really artistic person and so I have to keep being creative with my artistic projects no matter what I'm doing. If it's dance, if it's film, if it's photographing, if it's painting, origami. There are so many different forms of art, so if you have to move away from dance, I know how hard it is, but I would suggest definitely looking into finding other artistic outlets in your life. Maybe you could take up another sport eventually once your injuries have healed. Some of my favorite artistic pastimes are origami, jewelry making, videography. Obviously, I'm here talking to you guys, which means that I'm dealing with a video camera and all that kind of stuff, and and that is why I love YouTube so much because it's a creative process. I also love painting with watercolors, drawing, I love playing piano, singing. So those are just a bunch of different creative outlets that you might want to try out while you're taking a break from dance. So again, like I said, if you have any questions, please ask your teachers and talk to your doctors. And if you want to talk to me, then feel free to leave your questions down in the comments below. But please remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm just here to give some friendly advice and help you guys out because I know how hard being injured is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will start making many more videos as soon as I possibly can on this channel. But for the meantime, I'm just posting on my main channel, which is Clarissa May. And also, thank you guys so, so much for 100,000 on Clarissa May. I'm so excited. My mind literally just mind blown by that number. That is so crazy. So thank you guys so much. And also, thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this whole journey. I can't wait to see where the rest of my life takes me, what happens with dance. And thank you so much for sticking with me and for following me here on YouTube and Instagram and everything. Your support really, really means a lot, especially right now. So that's it for this video. I will talk to you guys very, very soon on my main channel and my blog channel and also my social media. And I'll be making videos on this channel as soon as I possibly can. I promise you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!